Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this last episode of the webinar about HRV presented by Valsir. My name is Alessandro Bravin, and I'm a technical advisor. In previous episodes, we discovered why an HRV system is so important for our health, thanks to the filters that can stop up to 65% of particulate matters and to air exchange that drastically reduces humidity index. We then enlisted in the second episode all the components needed for the wall system that are present in the Valsir catalog, such as a recovery unit, pipes, filters, inlets and outlets grids, and accessories. In this last episode, we're going to go through the HRV system designing process for a residential building from the very beginning to some installation tips. All the previous and future videos are going to be available on the social media channel, on Valsir Facebook page, on LinkedIn and on YouTube as well. If you may have any kind of question, please type it down in the live chat and I'll be more than pleased to answer at the end of this slide. We've already seen that uh, there are scientific data that related to a person health say that the appropriate uh, ratio for the ventilation is 0.5 volume per hour. That means that every hour we ideally should change half of the air volume inside our indoor environment. But there are some regulations, both Italian and international, that may help us with more specific suggestions when it comes to design an HRV system. The Italian UNI 10339, for example, tells us that it has to be ensured an air exchange value of 39.6 cubic meter per hour per person. If we use this regulation or the 0.5 ratio on a four people family living in a 100 square meters flat with an average ceiling height of three meters, the results are pretty close to one another. Moreover, the UNI TS11300 part one gives us a lower air exchange ratio of 0.3 volume per hour. One of the most used regulations around the European countries, the UNI EN 15251, tells us that we should use from 0.5 to 0.7 volume per hour, depending on the building category. One are the buildings with people at risk, such as hospitals and nursing homes, two are the new buildings, three are the existing buildings, and then there's a study called uh, Ventilation uh, Standards, Existing Buildings, Building Codes and Ventilation in Europe, that says that ventilation systems are being used differently across the European countries to adapt to the various local practices and climates. And the ratio between the lowest and highest ventilation rate is 1 to 6. That means that there isn't a specific ratio we should use when designing an HRV system. Valsir uh, uh, use uh, the 0.5 volume per hour ratio as an average value among the international standard to assure the best performances to the unit and the best effect in terms of air condition. Seeing that, let's enlist what is needed to design a nature V system. First, we should collect all the data. Basically, we have to know the surface of the building we're about to work on and some details about the geometry of itself, such as the structure and the ceiling height. We can then calculate the total amount of air to be changed using the 0.5 ratio. We then have to find the right position for the intake and outtake grids. You have to choose the heat recovery system or unit. Then we can go on choosing the right pipes, 
choosing the right distribution box, then the, the grids we do like the most, the grids are the only part actually visible in the heat recovery ventilation system, and then we can just make a final check to see if everything is fine. We're now going to see a real example of what an HRV designing process is, taking a real example of what happens every day in a technical department. Here we are in a 104 square meters apartment with an average ceiling height of 3 meters for a total volume of 312 cubic meters. What are we supposed to do first? We have to decide from which rooms we have to take the air out. As we've already seen in previous videos, we're going to pick those rooms where every day's activity creates or generates the most amount of humidity, or those rooms where we want to get rid of bad smell and where there is poor ventilation. We're going to pick, in fact, kitchen, bathroom, and the second bathroom, the walk-in closet. Then we have to choose which are the rooms we want to put fresh air in, and these are the rooms where we spend the most time in. These are the living room, the single and the double bedroom, and then we have a neutral zone that is the hallway, and in this case hallway is just in the center of the apartment, so it's the right place, it's the perfect place to put the HRV unit. This is just one of the possibility we can choose in designing an HRV system. Best practices are to put, uh, extract and put in grids on opposite walls, so to create a natural flow ventilation. Most of the time we have a double ceiling, so we're going to put everything on it, both for indoor and outdoor grids. As we see, we have to put the inlets grids up in the wall and the outlet grids down. Now we can do just some simple math to find the right air volume we have to change. We've seen we have a 312 cubic meters apartment. We know the rate exchange ratio is 0 0.5 volume per hour so we have a total volume to be renewed of 156 cubic meter per hour of course to balance the wall system the total air we put into the apartment has to be the same of the total air we put out so if we're going to introduce 156 cubic meter per hour we have to take out 156 cubic meter per hour. Then we have to choose the right unit to put inside this apartment. How we do that? We just have to find the right heat recovery unit from the Valsir catalog. We have to look for the surface and for the option we need for the unit. In this case, we choose the area EVO for vertical installation with a maximum potential of 250 cubic meter per hour. Choosing an overestimated heat recovery unit allows us to set it to work at minimum speed, avoiding noise and discomfort related to air flows. Of course, we have to change the whole amount of air and it has to be split between all of the rooms in the house. So we're going to extract from the kitchen 67 cubic meters per hour, 29 cubic meters per hour from the bathroom, 28 cubic meters hour for the second bathroom, and 32 for the walk-in closet. We have a total amount of 156 cubic meters per hour. The same goes for the emission. 64 cubic meters per hour for the living room and 44 and 48 cubic meters per hour 
for the single and double bedroom. And again, we have a total of 156 cubic meter per hour. Next step, choosing the pipes. As seen in the previous videos, Valsir has a round shaped pipe and an oval shaped one. We pick the first one. With a 75 mm of diameter, uh, we can carry about 34 cubic meter per hour. We then can find out how many input and output pipes are needed for each room. I would like to recall that Valsir pipes are designed with a smooth internal HDPE layer with additives that make them anti antibacterial and antistatic and with a corrugated HDPE external layer that makes pipes resistant and flexible at the same time. That means easier to install. Once pipes are chosen, we have to make a step forward and choose the distribution box. Referring to the real case we're working on, we did choose the six connection boxes. After that, we just have to sum up all the pressure drops related to the box, as we see in this first chart, and all the pressure drops per pipe. Then we have to sum up all the other um, pressure drops that are uh, made by external grid connection, deadeners and grip adapters. We finally come to the final check. Once all the pressure drops are summed, we can calculate what is the highest pressure drop air path and make sure that the total amount of pressure drop is lower than the fund prevalence. If verified, the designing process is finally complete. If you may have any question, I'm going to answer right now. So since there are no questions, I just want to invite you to follow our next webinar. It is going to be on another important topic, that is the rain water drainage system related to the climate change. The first episode is going to be on the 6th of June at half past 10. Thank you for joining us and have a nice day.